All right, so I get to go out to Home Pylon. Can you see? I'm pretty excited. Miss Amanda, I can thank Miss Amanda hey! for this. We're making it happen. We are. We're getting to go out to Home Pylon at the very last. Oh, look at the pitties. Uh, very last Reno Air Races. Super, super excited. All right, we're in the van. We're, it's official. We're on our way out to Home Pylon. side of the van looking back this way because they're going to be going really fast. Oh my gosh. This is freaking awesome. That's amazing. Thank You're you. Very welcome. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Thank you. That's amazing. Oh, Miss Amanda. Happy Grand. Happy Grand. Oh. My camera, my phone wouldn't even focus. They were going so fast. Yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh. Let's get. Okay, so here I am, Pylon 8, and here they come. <laughs> oh my god, this is amazing. So, Jet's coming. Jet's coming. Me and the Pylon. This is amazing. I can't thank you enough. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> they are 50 feet off the ground, away from my head. Oh my god, this is <laughs> amazing. Come on, sit.
the uh, gravel here is on the course, so stay everything on this side as much as you can. Um, you can go all the way down to the K-Rail if you want, just don't stand in front of those tables because they are looking and they're actually doing a bunch of stuff for the pylon judges. This is the old timer stand. You're allowed to go up here and you can watch if you'd like, but there are people working up there. Some of the starters will just stay out of their way, most of this way. If you want, you are allowed to climb to the top of the pylon. Only two people at a time at the top. It's just a ladder, raw iron, a little hard on the fingers. But if you go up, there's a bunch of crossbars. And everybody misses the crossbars except the last two that go this way, and everybody hits their head on. So be careful as you go up. There's a trap door at the top, so you open the trap door, get two people up, close the trap door, that way you don't fall back through. And if you're afraid of heights, I wouldn't do it. But if you're not afraid of heights, even though you say you're not, you open that trap door and look down that hole straight down and it gets a little wheezy. <laughs> so when you do it, if you feel that, if you want to, just sit down on the grate, open the trap door, and then put your legs on the ladder and it's a lot easier coming down. But you've got kind of the room in the place as long as you stay off the course and away from the table. It is the most badass thing in the world. And it's the top of the arc, so you gotta be at the top. Um, the way we measure that is there's actually someone sitting over in the grandstands contest committee. They're sitting at eye level with the R, and they're literally watching for high flight or low flight. Yeah, I've seen pictures of my head. Yep. Just, uh... We're in the barrel. It's a cut, and obviously you're going by pretty quick, so it's a blur. Um, but they're looking up. The other pylon judges stand inside the course, and their job is to get the numbers as they're going around. We write down every single race number as they're going by. So if we had to, we could recreate the race, who's in what place, and what's going on. At also, point, when there's yeah. a cut, it's usually not the pylons here. It's usually not that. It, sometimes it is, but a lot of times they miss that pylon and go for the next one, and it's a big cut. Which means if you're the pylon judges, I got planes on this side of me and this side right, of me. Right. They kind of say, "Hey, you got inside, I got outside." Though they're taking numbers on the cuts, the other ones are taking the numbers on the non-cuts. So all of that is kind of coordinated through, and then the table here is actually home pylon. All of those radio about what's going on comes into here, and then that goes into contest. So at the very end of the race, last one pulls off, they're saying any cuts and you'll hear it. It's like, under one, no cuts, under two, no cuts, under three, no cuts, and there's a cut, they get the number. They actually have to draw the thing down. So when there's a cut, the aircraft's supposed to go this way, he went this way, judges were standing here, here, and here. Oh, wow. So we actually have to have it down to that level Excuse just me. to make sure, because if we all, in it, any cut has to be unanimous. All of them have to call it. So if we do it, we want to make sure it's, I mean, if one person says, I didn't see the cut, or it wasn't, I didn't think it was a cut, it goes to the race. Are they above oh, the horizon? Yeah. Right. Are they above the horizon? 12 o'clock, yeah, Paula. So, oh, there. Okay. They're a finger above the ridge. Got it. Watch your ears. These things are pretty noisy. Uh, they are. It is. Uh, you are not in the cat box. You are outside the cat box. is outer nine for everybody except biplanes. Biplanes, this is inner six. I know, no biplanes this year, but I can still tell you about their course. Guess who's coming behind me? Somebody. Pass. This is outer nine for sport class. And here they come. Here they come. Watch this. Sport class. 
This is inbound start of the T6 race.
said we need to go to Reno and crew for my friend who just finished his legacy um, and I'm like what's that so he brought me to Reno and we were crews and that was in 2005 so I've been doing this since 2005 in 2013 Jim had finished his legacy and he said to me I think my airplane might be fast enough to race would you like to fly it That's like a dream come true right yeah nice. so I said yeah of course so we raced for three years in his airplane I was the first woman to go over 300 miles per hour in the sport wow, class that's super cool very proud I bet you a lot of people watching this will look up to you and think that you're the best person ever and think that you're going to be one of your role, one of their role models and keep them pushing forward. I think that's a great. I'm very, very fortunate. Unfortunately, when I bought this airplane to come back and race again, I didn't realize that I would be very slow, even though it's pretty. It's not as fast as a lot of the other planes because most of the sport class is running nitrous, which is like extra punch in the fuel. And I'm not doing that to my engine. So I'm actually pretty slow this year, but I'm still very fortunate because I'm in the races and yeah. it's the last Reno. So yeah, that's a super cool idea. Like, yeah. I bet you someday, if there will be more Reno since this is the last year, if there's going to be any more racing, I bet you a lot of women will come into racing. I hope so. And show that they can do it just as well as other people can. We have two women in the sport class this year, me and Vicky Benzie. Oh, nice. Yep, and Vicky's also racing Unlimited. There's uh, there's at least one woman in the Formula One class, uh, and there have been women racing jets in the past, so nice. they're here. You know? Yeah, they're here. They're just... It's not just a boys club anymore. Yeah. yeah. Women are starting to come and like show that they can do what boys can. Like, I'm thinking like that's like a super good thing to do yes. and show other women that they can fulfill their dreams and live how they want to live. Absolutely. I think the women do a good job in this Yeah, class. I think they do just as good as boys, honestly. Like, I well, think they, In aerobatics. Yeah, I think, I think they do really good. Really like, good. There's a bunch of women in aerobatics. Yeah. I think they should get into racing more as well. Yeah. Like get into all the sports, like everything. And I would like to also say I'm, an, I'm a mechanic. Oh, I'm nice. an A&PIA. And my crew chief is also a mechanic and a girl. Nice. So we, super cool. we like to see women in maintenance too, not just one. Yeah, I've, I've met lots of women trying to do their dreams. And like, you should do it. You can't let any, you shouldn't let anyone stop you or anything stop you to fulfill your dream. And the way I did it is I, I tagged along with somebody who knew and I learned from them and then I did it myself. So yeah. don't be hesitant or shy to, you know, just ask questions, get involved with a team, yeah. um, because that's the door into racing yourself. Yeah, that's super, I mean, that's just, some women like think that that's very, like, think it's a good thing to push forward instead of not, instead of getting held back. That's a super good thing to do. And most of the guys really want you to be involved and want, if yeah. you ask questions, if you show interest, People will welcome yeah, you, I mean, so don't be shy. Yeah, don't like feel like you're like you're a little like out of the club. You're like if you ask questions and show people you want to do it, you can get into it and like show people you're worthy of doing what you want to do. 
but it's really hard to have a good manicure when yeah, you're working like, on planes, I have to say. Mainly, you just gotta have, like, good <laughs> sportsmanship. Yes. Like, that's, like, really all you have to have is just good sportsmanship, because, yes. like, if that shows people that you're a nice person and you're willing. Yes. And, keep, and even if anything happens, you're still, like, a good sport. Like, that's the main thing anyone should do, is just be a good sport. And you can't be thin-skinned, you can't be self-conscious, yeah. you've gotta be... You gotta like one of the guys. It's okay, <laughs> you know. It's okay to yeah. be one of the guys. Yeah, you can like you have to invite like when there's new people coming, you gotta like let them in, like welcome them, like make them feel welcome. It's like one of those things you gotta do to show people that you're a good person. Yeah, yeah. So just roll with the punches, have fun, and people will people will teach you. That's my yeah. advice. Yeah, that's all for you. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you Ms. too. Miss Famous. <laughs>